Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. In today's episode, we're gonna be taking a look at an enhancement for probably my favorite approach in the world that I've experienced thus far. And that is St. Bart's or Tango Foxfot Juliet out in the Caribbean. Stick around guys and we're gonna check out a modification that turns this airport into something that it far, far closer represents the real thing. And then we're gonna test it out. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, so right off the bat, one of my biggest, and I think everybody is the community, one of the biggest complaints. Hello. That was unplanned. <laughs> one of the biggest issues with this particular approach that we have for the simulator is these trees. Uh, these trees are not supposed to be here. This is already a challenging enough approach. So the last thing that they would want to do is obviously further obscure the, the approach and the visual nature of, uh, of the approach itself. Um, so... The approach is uh, um, obscured, and obviously that is incorrect with the trees. There's a lot of details that's missing from it. There isn't any static aircraft. Um, now, with that being said, obviously I do not have um, the AI ground traffic turned on, and it's just because, like, you know, I get tired of seeing, you know, uh, Corsairs at a uh, jet airline terminal and things like that. So, you know, it just it needs a lot of work. Um, but uh, anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to be taking a look at a really cool uh, modification that was brought to my attention by one of you folks uh, just the other day when I was out here um, in the Icon A5. And uh, we're going to install it, we're going to run it, and then we're going to come back into the sim and see what it looks like. So make sure you let your eyes really feast on some of the detail that you're seeing now. Again, this is uh, TFFJ, I believe. There was a slight modification to it with some of the uh, exterior things, you know, the boats and things like that. Um, but uh, the airport itself is default. Um, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the add-on that we're going to be using today. All right, so here, as I said, is the add-on that we're going to be taking a look at. You can see right here from the screenshots, let's go ahead and start from the first one here, what we can expect. The trees are cleared. You have that nice uh, full visual um, on the approach line once you come into the high angle. Um, more cars, more objects set up here. What do we got here? TF1 seatbelt. Oh, we have a seaplane docking. How awesome is that? That is really awesome. So you're actually able to drop your seaplanes right uh, in the water rather than having to start from... Uh, uh, a different location boats in there we got some static aircraft wow there's a lot of population in here uh, this is actually quite impressive I'm sort of excited to check this out so we're going through the screenshots just so you way you guys can get ideas some points to look for um, not necessarily obviously we're gonna fly it so uh, but I just wanted you guys to have you know sometimes with these with these map, map add-ons it can be a little difficult to you know catch everything that you need to catch so uh, but like, yeah, that right there, that's a really nice, clean approach. Look at all those trees that are missing. So if we were to take a similar look at the uh, in-game sim right So once again, comparing the screenshot here, be looking downrange here. Oops, back up. Be looking downrange right up here. And then if we go to the sim, you can see what we have way out here. Oh, stupid toolbar. But you guys can see that way out there. It's just completely obscured. And it does make the uh, approach even far more challenging. Because you should be able to just really come right over the top of that hill right there. Um, and those trees put us significantly higher than where we want to be. And it can make this approach even far more challenging. And then obviously eliminate far more runway. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to uh, stop the simulator. We're going to get the uh, add-on installed. And then check it out. All right, so let us begin here. Um, we now have the add-on loaded. Now, one thing I do want to make sure that you guys catch, because yours truly did not read all the details, um, the TFF-1, the St. Bart's, St. Bart's Seaplane Airport, is a separate download. Uh, so make sure you grab that. I did not grab that. I was just sitting here wondering why it wasn't working, went back and read the documentation. It was right in front of my face in black and white print telling me it was a separate download. Um, so do keep that in mind. Uh, it does not come with this package. Um, but 
anyway, I just wanted to make sure you guys understood why I didn't demonstrate that part. But, oh, look at that. Okay, so this is the most critical part to me. And you guys are going to have to forgive the sloppy camera work. Unfortunately, my Xbox controller died, so I can't do the nice, smooth camera work. Um, but let's just start taking a look. So we have far more static aircraft here. Let's get uh, some altitude here. Got some static aircraft cars out in the lot there. Looks like a bit more detail on the ground. Even the helipad. I don't remember the helipad being there. We'll have to go back and look at the previous footage, but I don't think it was. Certainly there wasn't a static helicopter there, so that is very awesome. We now have a helo pad. Um, and the nice thing that I like about this add-on is it breaks down. You can actually have whether you want just the no trees fixed. Let's say you wanted, you wanted everything default, but you wanted these trees gone. There's an option for that. There's an option for no static aircraft on the ground. Um, there's a ton of different variations uh, that he put. Well, not a ton, but he, it's definitely broken into segments that gives you a lot of customization options options as far as how you want the mod to be installed and how you want it to portray in your simulator. Um, this is super exciting. I am I am absolutely like head over heels for this right here. Uh, I'm really, really excited to try this approach out without that uh, um, without those trees in the line. I think that's going to make a big, big difference on the approach. So you know what? Um, let's go ahead and experience this from the air. We even have our windsock up here. That's always awesome. But I think that I think that's the only way you're allowed to land on St. Bart's from this direction. I don't think you're allowed to come this way. Um, I'm pretty positive you're not allowed to take off from that direction, but I don't think you can. Maybe you can land from that direction. Maybe you can. Um, but uh, I know you can't take off from that way, if memory serves. I don't think you're allowed to take off towards the hill. Um, but uh, anyway, so yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the seat here and let's get our aircraft started and let's go for a quick flight around St. Bart's. This is literally one of my most favorite approaches. Okay, I was initially going to do the Monster Cub, and then I decided I wanted to fly something a little bit uh, more challenging for this approach. The Cub, I mean, you can you can land it in, a, in your uh, garage, so I wanted something a bit more. Why aren't you locking? The door should lock. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and walk through a pre-flight checklist here real quick. Again, we're just doing a real quick turnaround here. All right, so air conditioning panel should be off for engine start. All anti-ice and pedo heats are off. Uh, parking brake is set, landing gear handle checked down, hot airflow should be at the floorboard for engine start, pressurization is off, manual override is off, fuel tank selected, throttle is in cutoff, flaps are retracted, static air source is pushed in and closed, all lights and electronic systems are off. Let's go ahead and check the ignition systems though. Uh, ignition system for pre-flight should be set to the off position. Auxiliary boost pumps are off. Fuel selection should be set to manual. Autopilot and trim system should be off. Generators are off and all lights are off. All right, so let's get started here. We're going to start out with our battery. We're going to go to the main generator here. Do, 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 do. Let that Garmin come on. Let's bring the Garmin up so we have our engine gauge management. Clear the master oh, caution there. I am moving quick, guys, because the whole purpose of this is not for a checklist on this. Uh, stepping down over here for just a minute. Let's do a quick lights test on the landing gear. Make sure the landing gear is uh, blinking three green, green indicates down and locked. All right, and come back upstairs for just a moment here. All right, ignition system should be into the on position. Auxiliary boost pumps to the on position. And from here, we can take our starter, give it a one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and start monitoring our engine gauges. Looking for 53% on NG, to, or uh, actually, excuse me, first 13. There's 13%, take our throttle into low idle. 53% will be looking for high idle, and then moving it over to flight idle. Clear the master caution. And again, I'm monitoring this gauge right here. Basically, when the numbers turn green, you're good. All right, so we're going to hold left click and hold, move it up to the high idle position, give it a right click while holding left click. That takes it up over into the flight idle position and make sure our throttles are in idle. Once we can confirm a good engine start, we will go ahead and go to auxiliary boost pumps, go into the auto position. Fuel selection goes into the auto position. Autopilot systems come on. Emergency locator make sure is armed. And let's see, your ignition can also go into the auto position from this point forward. Nav lights are on, pulse lights are on, taxi light on, we're ready for taxi. Uh, set our barometric pressure. Barometric pressure is set. We're looking for 40 feet at touchdown. And let's see here, we are getting ready to taxi, so I'm going to go ahead and throw the initial separator on now. 
pressurization switch, although we're not going very high today, we're just going to do a quick loop. We're going to go ahead and set that to auto. Uh, max diff or auto is acceptable. Just think about uh, max diff. Remember, that's going to pressurize the aircraft the fastest and therefore could lead to some discomfort. All right, from here, air conditioning system can be set as desired and everything else. We are set and ready to go. We can go ahead and do our pedo install heaters now. Uh, but again, we're not going particularly high, so chances are not particularly necessary. Um, because of our current location, I think we're going to go ahead and do a pushback. So we've probably done that before the engine start, so that part is a fail on me, but it happens. That's the master caution indicating the inertial separator is active. Let's do a quick pushback here. Start pushback. Let's bring him over here. Again, this should have been done before engine start. I was thinking that I was going to have enough room to just turn the aircraft around, but I'm not convinced. Uh, so rather than uh, risk anything, we're just going to play it safe. Yeah, that would be like a totally bad place to be right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, you are okay. Um, that didn't that didn't seem to go well. Uh, tug speed. Whoa, slow that tug down. We don't need to go that fast. I want tail to the left. We also have an update coming for the TBM 930 guide, the A320 guide, and the advanced MCDU guide all coming out this week. So make sure you guys check out Patreon if you guys are interested in doing that. Uh, levels tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides. Make sure you guys check those out. I think you guys are really going to dig them. Master Caution, let's clear that out for the parking brake. All right, release our uh, tug there, and we're ready to get moving on our own here. Yeah, let's get those cameras set back up. Whoa, actually, that camera got even weirder, if anything. What happened here? There we go. That's really weird. What? There. I don't know why that got back so far back. Okay, releasing the parking brake. Adding some power. I'm dying to see how awesome this approach is without those trees in the way. That has been such a major issue. Uh, since we started flying and this is easily easily one of my favorite places uh, this one and Princess Juliana at St. Martin are, are probably my favorites I just I love the Caribbean I think the Caribbean is just absolutely beautiful and then you know just throwing in the challenge of both of these airfields you know the Princess Juliana right it's all about scraping that fence man you want to just get as close to that fence as you can just because it's fun alright let's go ahead and lock down in here here we're gonna go strobe lights on landing lights on flaps one and let's take the runway hopefully nobody's coming here not like you can see them at that point all right and whoa fast taxi goodness gracious I'm pretty sure we just did a donut or a tail slide there all right lock down lock down there we go locked up all right let's uh, give that heading knob a tap we're set to our rotary, blah, blah, blah. And we're just going to do manual all the way around in our little circuit here. We're just going to go up, uh, take her up to about 1,500 feet, go around the island, come back in for approach. Um, and actually, I think we need to go to about 2,500 feet because I think you need to be a bit higher for that, uh, that rear approach. All right, so let's set our torque. We're looking for 100% on torque. Releasing the brakes. Takeoff power set. Pulling it back just a hair. We don't want to go over airspeed alive based on weight we should be able to rotate about 70 knots rotating nope she's still one of the 90 I must have put more fuel in than I thought I did positive rate gear up bring her to the left Flaps up. Got 500 feet.
I think we're definitely going to want on today's flight. I think I'm going to want uh, some record action. So let's get... Uh, oh, I'm over torquing. I guarantee I'm over torquing. That's why it's yelling at me. Yep, I am. I'm trying to open Sky Dolly at the same time. And I think I actually just messed up. I don't think I actually double clicked it. Darn it. Gaming. You guys have to forgive me the flying for a minute. Applications. Sky Dolly, where are you? There you are. I'm pretty sure I'm climbing way above what I wanted to. There's Sky Dolly launched up. All right, cool. We are queued and ready to go. Let's see where we're at. We're at 3,000 feet. Let's level that off. Holy crap, we got high. And let's just start bringing it back down. I'm going to go throttles basically to idle here. Inertial separator stays on. We're in the clouds anyway. Um, we're probably going to have to... Yes, I know. It's saying landing gear because I pulled the RPMs too far off. But in trying to create cinematic amazingness, <laughs> I got too freaking high. <laughs> All right, let's bring it on over here. Let that airspeed continue to fall like a rock here. Looking for 130 knots, and then we'll uh, drop our flaps. There's 1,800 feet on the tape. There's 130 flaps one back down. One two zero gear down. Gonna be looking for eighty five knots on the approach speed. There's 1,400 feet. I'm going to start arresting that descent a bit. A little left rudder to bring that nose around. Start arresting that descent a bit more. Trimming nose up. Full flaps coming in. Power falling off. Trimming nose down. Let's start that recording. All right, we got Sky Dolly going. Be able to replay our landing here. And the nice thing is, is I'm pretty sure that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, I can already see our runway. We're almost on runway heading, slightly off. So I'm going to try to bring it to the left just a little bit more. Hold about a thousand feet. Wind 062 at 13 knots. So definitely got a nice crosswind coming in. And then we already have visual on the runway, which is awesome. So I'm going to kick us into a bit of a slip here. Mm, I got to correct. I slipped too far. There we go. I don't know that I've ever tried a forward slip in the TBM. down. Oof. Such a short landing. Let's see what that looked like back on tape here. I feel like I might have bumped the top of the hill. I think I got too low, but let's find out. Oh, no, I guess not. Still really long. I flared way too soon. Way too soon on that flare. It's 
still not bad at all. And it was so much easier this time actually being able to see the freaking runway. You see the runway so late um, with those trees in the way. I am blown away by this add-on. Um, to the gentleman who suggested this to me, thank you so much. I absolutely appreciate that. This is seriously one of my favorite airports. And those trees have always been a struggle point. I didn't even know this uh, scenery was available. So, guys, be sure to check this out. Link down in the description below. I think you're absolutely going to love it. If for no other reason than getting rid of those trees at the top of the hill, it completely changed the experience. I'm going to go back up and fly a little bit more on this one and try my landings because now this changed the entire game. Everything that I've done since we started uh, flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator, now when it comes to St. Bart's, um, my whole approach has to change now. Um, and I actually have a chance to really start trying to master this one without dodging those trees at the top of the hill. Um, the scenery itself looks absolutely fantastic. All of the detail, the static aircraft, uh, the buildings, everything that was put into this, the vehicles. Um, thank you so much to the developer of this uh, scenery. It's absolutely changing the game for me already, and I've been in it in a whopping, what are we at here on this recording? Uh, what are we at? I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe? So anyway, guys, let me know what you think down in the description below. Also, let me know if you guys know of any really uh, other cool sceneries that we should try out here on the channel. I would love to demo anybody's channels if you'd like or anybody's scenery. Uh, it doesn't have to be yours. If you just think it's a cool one and, and, and you want to see it on the channel, um, shoot me a message and by all means, we'll take a peek at it. As always, guys, stay safe and healthy and I will see you in the next one.